Blockers is one of those poker buzzwords that you've probably heard ad nauseum over the past few years. So what are they? Blockers are the cards that you hold in your hand. These two cards dictate your chance of winning the pot, but your chance of winning the pot isn't just based on what you have. It's also based on what your opponent has. The cards we hold in our hand tell us what we have, but they also tell us what our opponent doesn't have. In the last lesson, we learned how combinatorics elevates us from merely assigning a range to our opponent to breaking down the quantity of hands within that range. Blockers are a tool to further narrow down that range. Our whole cards can have a significant effect on the range of our opponent. There are 28 available combinations of pocket aces, pocket kings, and ace-king. If we have ace-four suited in our hand, then that number gets chopped down to 21 available combinations. Three combos of aces, six combos of kings, three combos of ace-king suited, and nine combos of ace-king offsuit. Simply having an ace in our hand reduces the likelihood that our opponent holds aces, kings, or ace-king by 25%, giving our bluff the highest chance of success. This is the power of blockers. Blockers come into play on every street, not just preflop. Consider which of these two hands would be a better bluff catcher on this board. Both hands have the same strength, but there's a critical difference. When we have the Ace of Hearts, we block some of our opponent's flush combos. Therefore, their range will be weighted more towards bluffs compared to when we have the Ace of Spades, which blocks some of their possible bluffs and will weight them towards value. Blockers don't tell us everything, but they allow us to call more when we block value or fold more when we block bluffs. Holding key cards post-flop that block value enables you to apply maximum pressure against your opponents. There are many levels to applying blockers, some of which may be invisible at first. Having the Ace of Hearts on a three-heart board reduces the chance that your opponent can have a super strong hand. That's easy enough. Having Eights on 6, 7, 10 board does the same. Makes sense. But some scenarios are tricky. Having Jack-10 on Jack-10-9 Rainbow may seem great, but when your opponent shows aggression and is putting lots of money in the pot, you also need to look at your hand in terms of blockers. Having Jack-10 significantly reduces the chances of your opponent having some of the obvious hands that you beat, such as a worse two pair or a pair in a straight draw, therefore increasing the chance that he is one of those hands that beats you, like bottom set or a straight. Think for a moment about the following scenario. You hold two black nines on this flop. Doesn't seem all that noteworthy at first blush, but your cards make it impossible for an opponent to have 8-9 suited and flop trips. There are other combos of 8-X within his range, but definitely less when we have 9s eliminating all possible combos of 8-9 suited. So concludes Poker Math Fundamentals. Whether this was an introduction or a review, you now have a better understanding of equity, EV, pot odds, SPR, combinatorics, and blockers. This isn't 2005, Grandpa. In today's game, a tight grasp of poker math is required to win. Without it, you will be flying blind for all of your decisions at the table.